Thank you, Steph. York Regional Police concerned for the well-being of a missing teenage boy. They are asking for the public's help to locate him. This is 13-year-old Declan Fitzgerald. We'll show you uh, his picture in a bit. Was last seen yesterday afternoon when he left his home on Royal Cedar Court in the area of Mount Albert Road and Colony Trail Boulevard in Holland's Landing. He's described as five foot four with brown hair. At the time, was wearing a gray champion hat with a large white C on it. A blue Tommy Hilfiger sweater, black pants. He has not contacted his family. Police say this is out of character for him. If you have seen him or if you have any information, please do contact police. Well, after seeing some record high COVID case numbers on the weekend, the tally dropped slightly yesterday. Still, some 851 new cases were reported, down significantly from Sunday's 1,042 cases. There were six new deaths. That was yesterday, bringing the total to 3,099. Toronto, Peel, York and Ottawa reporting the bulk of these cases. The province did not move Halton and Durham into that modified stage two, as had been rumoured, but is keeping a close eye on those numbers. Uh, every single time we go to go back, roll back to uh, stage two, I've contacted all the mayors. I speak to them and everyone was in consensus. But uh, when they aren't, it's, it's concerning to me. And uh, a, a priority is to keep the economy going, protect the small businesses. The province's finance minister will deliver its first COVID pandemic budget. That's on November the 5th. Rod Phillips said the budget is the start of a long-term plan to get Ontario and provincial businesses back on their feet. It will be a three-year budget that will build on our government's $30 billion response to COVID-19. We will get back on the traditional budget calendar with another multi-year budget update by the end of March 2021 that outlines a plan to return Ontario to a fiscally sustainable path. Meanwhile, a Conservative MPP has apologized for posing for a group photo on the weekend, not wearing a mask or social distancing. Niagara West MPP Sam Oosterhoff has says that social distancing protocols were followed at the outdoor at the indoor event, but admits he was wrong for not wearing a mask for the photo. The Premier says Oosterhoff will remain as the parliamentary assistant to the education minister. In a heated exchange during yesterday's question period, Ontario NDP leader Andrea Horvath called on Ford to fire his minister for long-term care after a new report was released into the deadly spread of COVID-19 in long-term care homes. Somebody has to take responsibility for all of those deaths. Please don't make it about me. Uh, I want it to be about Ontarians. Now, coming up here, we're going to talk to Oshawa Mayor Dan Carter. He will be joining us to discuss Durham Region dodging provincial rollbacks in that modified stage two and what could be the future for Durham Region. That's coming up at 730. Here in Toronto, health officials are preparing for a long winter after the back-to-back -back record highs in the province over the weekend and are pleading with residents to follow COVID guidelines. Our numbers are high. Right now, we're making it easier for COVID-19 to spread. Now more than ever, I need your help. I need you to make the choice to be part of the solution by following the advice and direction of our doctors. Mayor John Tory asked for Toronto Public Health to come up with multiple scenarios to prepare for what's to come at the end of the 28-day modified stage two, including one that would allow restaurants to reopen safely, saying tents, pods, even yurts that are opening up at patios in the city may not be the safest option. It shouldn't be a way in which you create a new kind of indoor space. It has to be something that is outdoor within the context of proper ventilation and so on. And so I think what it outlined or underlined is the need for some clarification. At City Council this morning, final approval is expected to extend the Cafe TO program through to the spring, allowing restaurants to open outdoor patios throughout the winter and remove restrictions that might prevent an outdoor patio in front of buildings. Well, the federal Liberals have held on to two Toronto ridings in closely contested by-elections. We begin in Toronto Centre, where broadcaster Marcy Ian won for the Liberals in a race that was strongly contested by the new Green Party leader, Annemi Paul. And then in York Centre, community activist Yara Sachs narrowly defeating the Conservatives. Sachs tweeting a simple thank you 
to her supporters. Both riders, both ridings rather, are considered liberal strongholds, so the closeness of the race is definitely a concern for the party. We're going to bring you more on this coming up. And still to come here on BT, COVID-19 long haulers. You've probably heard of that term, but we're going to speak with a young woman who tested positive for the virus months ago, but is still suffering its effects. As well, the historic vote is just a week away. Coming up at 8 this morning, City News reporter Melissa Duggan joining us with a look ahead to the U.S. presidential election as Joe Biden and Donald Trump wrap up the 2020 campaign.